Hi, welcome to the second makeup video with legendary makeup artist Mary Greenwell. I'm so excited to have her as a guest artist here. She did a, a soft look, uh, sort of Kate Blanchard inspired, and now she's going to take that look on and do a Jessica Chastain, who's a big client of hers, inspired look. And um, something just with a little bit more drama and um, a little bit more evening. So I'm sure you're going to love it. So I'm going to go on from this look and I'm going to start adding more colour and I'm going to use this palette which is divine, will be amazing on her. Just watch how we develop with these four colours, okay? Bringing that down, I'm going to start with the pale. So I want to transform her eyes with this palette and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm highlighting under the brow. It's always a good start. It's a great bone. So I'm using this green in the socket of the eye because I really, really want to show four different colours on one eye. It's going to be very, very magical and colourful and divine, but also, of course, absolutely stylish and um, modern and contemporary, and it will not look like, you won't look like a clown. You know, the thing is, because of the quality of makeup these days is so good, it's really hard for them not to work on the face. And I want you to, I want to show you that these colours will open your eye. Green looks fantastic on redheads. Um, so do blues by the way. But Claudia has blue eyes, so I do love the contrast of green eyeshadow with blue eyes. I do actually seriously love that contrast. So I just want to make it very clear to you all that, you know, on the red carpet, when I'm doing just Jessica on the red carpet, which I do privilege to do a lot, it's, um, you know, we spend hours because there's no retouching on the re red carpet. There's so much retouching in photography nowadays. Um, that, you know, people often think that the red carpet is retouched as well, but they've got the, the, these actress, actresses have to look as beautiful as if they have been retouched. So we spend, you know, I will spend an hour and a half on doing a really simple makeup on her because I want everything to be so blended. But actually, in real life, there's something really wonderful about the slightly slapdash approach to makeup. Um, you know, like, yes, you've done to yourself, and yes, you love what you've done to yourself, and yes, you know, it's all beautiful and and fun but there's something more artistic about just a really relaxed approach so I, I want to achieve that on Claudia today with you I don't want you to feel that you can't do this you can do this it's really easy just be confident be happy and go for it okay so I'm now moving on to the darkest color in the palette which was that dark purple color and I want you to also all notice that I'm using the same brush throughout. Again, it's that thing of easiness and relaxness. It's the same brush. Just make sure you never put too much on the beginning. If you do, you can always dab in the back of the hand like I did. And then just use it very precisely, but with, rela with a relaxed attitude. So one brush, one good brush will see you through. I'm now using the darker color in the socket of the eye. This will just um, give the intensity and the smokiness that I'm going for. It'll knock back the color a bit, but add the intensity. I'm now moving on to the sm a smaller brush and I'm going to go under the eye with the purple. Purple is such a great color in makeup. It really, really does work on everybody. And look, it's working on a redhead. It can also become very retro, of course. It can be very um, sort of 70s, Jerry Hall 70s, who I did the other day, who's quite divine, by the way. She really is, she's very special. You know, what's so amazing is those really wonderful people like um, Marie Helvin, Jerry Hall, you know, they were the original supermodels before the supermodels became supermodels, so to speak. They were, they, they were the ones who opened the doors for the supermodels. And then along came Linda and Christy and Cindy and all those wonderful girls that I happened to be privileged to start with. We all started in 1984 in Paris. Spring of 1984 was a very famous year in the fashion world. Not just because of me. Look up. <laughs> because of them <laughs> and it was people like Sam McKnight and Julianne Deese and Didier Melige and Orbe, Kevin O'Coin who sadly passed away, Francois Nas, Laura Mercier, goodness all those wonderful people. Okay so we're really really getting the smoky effect and the kind of delicious deep deep eyeshadow, the colours coming through more and more. I'm going to add some more colour here to the corner and as you can see again I haven't changed my brush, I'm still on my little skinny brush. Very relaxed, not really sort of focusing too much, just knowing my intention is to make a smoky eye but looking as gorgeous and real as possible. I'm now going to add a lot of mascara to make the eye pop. So here we go. Look down. Just to finish the eye off now, this is, the eye is complete. I'm just going to take the pale colour. I'm just going to add a tiny bit. This will only show when her eyes close. Open. It won't show otherwise, but I, close your eye. So just open. 
close, open, close. So do you see, what you're just getting is a lovely reflection of paleness just in the centre of the lid there. But it will only show when the eyes close, which is so pretty. Open. So that's great. I love that effect. I think it's so cute and divine. It's sort of such a surprise when a girl just has a teeny bit of a pale colour just through there. Now, with a look like this, what's very important is contour. Turn to me. Now, this colour by MAC is actually a blush colour, but they're so clever because it's actually, it's a contour blush colour. So that means it has no red in it. It's the same, exactly the same philosophy as the brows. No red. So I'm going to use this in contour. Okay. Right, now you have to turn your face all the way to me, my darling. And I'm going to go down from the side of, side of, of the ear here and just take it down through here. You'll see it, guys, because I really want you to see it. Down through here, and I'm going to stop at the line of the brow. So down and stop. Down and stop. I'm putting on quite a lot because I really want you to see it. I really, really want you to see how I'm working it. And then you blend up. This is what contour is really all about. Coming straight down from the ear, under the bone, which is this bone here, straight down here and stopping at the brow. So you literally come down here and stop, okay? Now if you suck your cheeks in, you might actually find you're going way too far down. So stop here. I'm just gonna blend this in, taking it way into the ear. I don't want you to, I don't want anyone to think this isn't her natural shading, the natural shading of the cheek. So here we go, this is giving you a really high cheekbone taking it way back onto the ear and then down and then stopping here. So now looking straight ahead, you will never see a sort of brown line coming down the side of the face. It will stop here. Do you see? So it was completely real. I'm now going to do the other side. Okay, I just want to let you all know, you know, I haven't been talking about redheads at all. And I think that's really unfair on you redheaded people out there. So I just want to say the reason why I'm not talking about redheads is, is for me because there's absolutely no difference. This is exactly the same makeup I would be doing on anybody. It would be makeup I'm doing on Jessica Chastain, who's a red, redhead, Kate Blanchett, who is actually blondie strawberry. Um, and anybody else. But what it is, it's Lily Collins, for example, but what it is, it's pale skin that I'm really working with. So defining the, the, the cheekbone will help bring out, will give more definition to a pale face. That's what I'm really doing, okay? It's about the skin color, not about the hair color. I'm gonna now just bring, change that blush color, make it a little bit more apricot. I think it'll be softer with the eye. So as you can see, the orange actually did help the eye colors to pop more. So I'm gonna put the same on this side. I did not remove what was underneath in the first look that we did. There was no need because it was so subtle anyway. So in fact, you know, with makeup, everything's about building. So putting two colors on top rather than one is a great asset. Okay, moving on, I'm gonna take this lip gloss off. I want to go with a really strong mouth. I want to just tell you guys that I'm keeping I'm keeping the brows soft for this look. I think it should always be important to keep one feature kind of just like knocked back. Uh, it might become a little bit too heavy. But again, not only for a redhead, but for anybody, if I made the brows stronger, it would make it a very, 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 very strong makeup if I did make the brows darker. So I'm keeping them back. Now you're going to be surprised what a strong color I'm using. This you really need to outline. And remember, I'm only outlining not because um, Claudia's mouth needs to change shape at all, although that's a very good reason to, to use a lip liner, to slightly alter the lip line. But I'm simply using this because I'm using such a dark lipstick, it'll help it last much, much longer. So that's the lip line done. As you can see, this, it's well defined. Right, now I'm gonna take the lipstick, Tom Ford. It's a famous black orchid. And you're going to see open a bit, darling. Open a bit more and relax, so to speak. And I'm just going to dab this on directly from the tube. I do not like using lip brushes unless I have to. Again, for the same reason, messy, wasted product, unnatural. The, you know, the lipstick bullet is an amazing inve invention. Do this. More, more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't be frightened, Go, keep going, keep going, keep going, just keep going. I'm giving you permission to keep rubbing that in. Keep going. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to do the top lip. If you're not using a lip brush, of course you have to be careful, but just like have fun. Just like watch the lipstick growing on your mouth. Watch how your lips are changing. Watch how you can really bring out the best of your mouth. Now again, rub your lips together. Go back and forth. Don't be afraid. Don't be frightened. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Great. Good. Stop. Um... 
See, look how natural that looks because she was rubbing it in with her own mouth. So I'm just going to get to the corner even with a bullet. No problem. The other thing, thing I love to do is I love to blend in now so we lose the very hard line. I just love to blend the whole line in very gently with a Q-tip. So it'll just soften it a wee, wee, weeny bit. So that's what I call a black orchid mouth. And this is a very, very, very strong makeup look, but quite divine. So you can see how we've gone from totally natural to this really strong look that is t very modern, very contemporary, and um, quite lovely on this gorgeous face. What do you think, Claudia? I really like it. It's really strong. I love strong lips. You do? I do. Good. Okay, so I just want to say one more thing about, first of all, skin. Red, redheads, red-headed people often have freckles. I love freckles and they change nothing, okay? Normally people who have freckles have the most beautiful skin. So wear as little base as possible, but otherwise the makeup stays exactly the same. You can do whatever you want. You know, with this whole look, isn't it amazing? Here we have a redhead. Who would ever think that a redhead can wear a mouth that dark? and not be put off, you know. This goes to show, you can do anything you want. This gorgeous pale skin, pale hair, fantastic coloring and a really dark mouth. This now is a perfect vamp, modern look and contemporary makeup, think of Twilight, right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the mouth, one feature, and it will change the entire look. I've removed the lipstick, that wonderful lipstick, and I'm going to now make it very, very soft. You will see how drastically the makeup change. First of all, I'm gonna put concealer over the mouth to reduce the color. With the same lip liner I used in the first look, very neutral, just to highlight, the, just to define the mouth a little bit. So I'm using a kind of slightly corally, soft, very pale orange undertone lipstick. It has quite a lot of shimmer in it, not too much. I want something that she's not contrasting, something that's blending in with the eye colors. A pink would have been too contrasting for the look that I want to create right now. And also, again, with the redhead, look how beautiful this color goes with her coloring. It's just all blending in so beautifully. Open your mouth a bit, darling. Open your mouth a bit more. Relax. Great. Okay, go back and forth, like I've taught you. Relax. Pite your lips a bit. Great. Perfect. You can do this, can't you guys? Just pack and pat, pat, pat with the lip gloss, with the lipstick. Pat, pat, pat. Just building up the color. Pat, pat, pat. Relax. There you go. So that's a completely different look. I want you all to really take on board how the lip color changes everything. So if you are either frightened or don't like the idea of having the twilight mouth, for lack of a better way of describing it, then we can go with this very soft mouth and your look becomes softer, more in keeping with maybe what you sort of feel about yourself. It's, a, it's full of expression, but it's not so um, obvious. And look, so she has this beautiful soft face with these amazing eye colors and a really beautiful soft mouth, all blending in with her skin coloring. I hope you can all see the difference, big time. Remember, we've changed nothing about the eye at all. It is simply the lip color we've changed and it's changed the entire look. That's how much the lip color can help you achieve the look you want to achieve.